Hello, I'm Stephen Shore, and I'm going to take you around this retrospective exhibition of mine at Fundación Mafre Madrid. So let's get started. Um, the first room is early work, and it begins with a picture I made in 1960, when I was about 12 or 13 years old, and it goes up to about the age of 16, at which point there was a change in my life. I met Andy Warhol and asked if I could come to his studio, the factory, to take pictures, because it was at that point famous in New York. It was a real turning point in my life. First of all, it was a lot of fun. It was exciting. I met amazing people. But also, I got to watch an artist working every day. And what I saw was a person making aesthetic decisions again and again, finer and finer decisions. And I began to get a taste of what it's like to, to be an artist from, from experiencing Andy working. When I, when I left the factory, the first body of work I did was this conceptual work. This is a piece I did in 1969 where I follow a friend of mine for a day starting at midnight and going to the next midnight, photographing him every hour and half hour on the hour and half hour. I wanted to take a certain degree of subjectivity out of a photograph. And I thought that if the moment a picture was made was taken out of my hands, so I wasn't deciding exactly on the moment, that um, the imposition of my decisions would be less visible in the picture. I think I found that this really wasn't satisfying. That I wanted to have a less mediated experience of the world. And what I mean by that is I wanted a picture that was less about the convention, visual conventions of photography. And that's what I was after by having some of the decisions being predetermined. But I thought there was another way of doing it. And that led to this work, which is called American Surfaces. Rather than having some of the decisions predetermined, as in the conceptual work, I felt I could, by studying photography and studying particularly how I see and what the experience of seeing is like, and paying attention to the experience of seeing, I could take pictures that were closer to seeing and are, were more about seeing than about how a photograph was supposed to look. So I kind of threw out the ideas of how a photograph conventionally looked and pa just paid attention to how I was seeing. I, what I would do was, in a way, what we would call today, take a screenshot of my field of vision at any time. If I'm riding in a taxi, if I'm in an elevator, if I'm talking to someone, whenever I thought of it, take a screenshot of my field of vision and use that as a reference for how to photograph. Photography can do many things at once, and aside from exploring the aspect of perception that I described, I was also interested in exploring uh, America. And I did it through a, a diaristic format, where I photographed every person I met, uh, every meal I ate, every television set I looked at, a series of repeated categories. My idea was to try to build a picture of the culture through these repeated categories. Now also, you'll notice these pictures are in color, or maybe you even don't notice these pictures are in color because that's simply what pictures look like today. But when I exhibited them, this was, this was shocking because Art photography was supposed to be black and white. In fact, when I first showed them, it really transgressed a lot of different criteria of art photography. With these pictures, what I'm doing is essentially setting up a proscenium with the frame. 
I know where the frame is coming, I know where the plane of focus is, and then I'm watching action on the street, waiting for a, uh, just the right moment to happen on that stage. One thing I wasn't expecting was that I've never been more invisible as a photographer on a street in New York than with the 8x10 camera. I thought it would be the exact opposite. In a picture like this, I'm standing just a few feet away from the people I'm photographing. With a camera this size, standing there with holding a cable release, and people are completely ignoring me. So we're gonna go to some of the most recent work. So as you see, I'm going back to color. And I can, I'll mention a couple of things that first attracted me to color back in the early 70s. One is quite simple, that, that the world I see is in color. That it seemed to me that a color photograph was gonna look more natural, more look, look more like the experience of seeing. It would be more transparent, and what I mean by that is, it would be less about the photographer and more about the world. You would be stopped less at the, at the surface of the picture and see through the surface of the picture to the world. And that's what I mean by transparent. 